أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى This is the second lesson on the course إرشال الطلبة إلى التمييز بين القراءة العشرة guiding the students to discerning between the ten recitations In this video we're starting with chapter 2 which is dealing with the singular applications so this term, the singular applications, you don't really find it in Qira'at. I've coined it for the purpose of this particular course. course. We, what I mean by singular application is a particular way of reciting something in the Qur'an, and it is applied by only one Qari or one Rawi. We've discussed in the previous video who the Qur'a are, who the Ruwat are, so you should be familiar with them by now. So now we're starting to identify by hearing the applications when you hear that, which Qari which is it or which Rawi is it? So the book is structured in this way where we deal only with the single applications. There are some applications which are cited by more than one Qari or more than one Rawi. So in that sense, when you hear that particular application, you won't know exactly who it is. You can narrow it down, but you know, won't know exactly who it is. But in these applications, because it's applied by only one Qari, you will know exactly who that particular Qari is. And we're starting with the easier rules that you are hopefully familiar with uh, from your study of Tajweed and then into the more advanced ones that come only in Qira'at. So the first one, one of the very first rules we learn when studying Tajweed is the rules of non sakin and Tanween. So the students studying this particular book and doing this course should be familiar with all of these rules before. So I'm just going to very, very briefly go through them. The rules of Nun Sakin and Tanween are four. You have Ilhar as the first one. So you have a Nun Sakin, you have a Tanween. You have to look at the letter that follows. If it is one of the letters of the throat, Hamzaha, Ain Ha, Ain Ha, will make Ilhar read it clearly. The Nun from his own Makhraj, the letter that follows from his own Makhraj. An Amta, for example, the Nun followed by the Ain. An Ha, the Nun followed by the Ha. Then you have Ilham, which will be discussed further in this particular lesson. Then you have a collab, which is to change. This when you have a noon sakina followed by a ba. You then change the noon into a meme. So instead of an bia, we need am bia, and it will be applied with ikhfa as well. With and then you have ikhfa, which is to hide the noon. So this is when the noon is followed by any of the remaining letters. For example, and anqa. Okay, you have Ikhfa over there. With regard to the seven Qur'a, they only differ with regard to Ilham. So we're going to be looking specifically at Ilham. From our normal study of the Jweed of Hafs, we know that it's of two types, with Gunna and without Gunna. So the letters of Ilham are Yarumalun, the six letters found in the code Yarumalun, which is divided into two types. You have Yanmu and you have the Lam and the Ra. So for Hafs, you're going to have the lam and the ra with al hunna, mir rabbihim, mil ladun, and the others with hunna. But for khalaf and hamza, right? Khalaf and hamza, and remember we are dealing only in this with the seven qiraat. So I didn't even need to specify that it is khalaf and hamza, it is automatically excluding khalaf al ashir because we're looking only at the seven qiraat. We will read without Hunna in the Ya and the Wow as well. So for Hafs, you'll have May Ya'mal with the Hunna. Khalaf will do it without the Hunna as May Ya'mal. For Hafs, you'll have Miwal with Hunna of the Noon going into the Meme. Khalaf will read Miwal without the Hunna. So he reads with Ilham with Hunna only in the Noon and the Meme. And he will have four letters we will have without Hunna. The Lam and the Ra is normal. But then also the ya and the wa. This is applied only by khalaf and hamza, the rawi of hamza. So if you hear a person reciting in a different qira'a and you hear this particular application, then you know for sure that it is definitely khalaf. It is the riwayah of khalaf and hamza that you are listening to. So as mentioned before, this is an exercise for each lesson. What you need to do in the exercise is highlight or make an indication in your book or on your laptop, if you can. Uh, we khalaf will read without the ghunna. So you're looking for a nun sakin or tanween, followed by a wow or a yeah. That is where khalaf will 
recite without the ghunna. Okay, so you can pause the video at this particular point and complete the exercise. And once you've done, you can resume and then see the answers to the exercise. So to continue for the first one, you have Risha wa lahum. Okay, the next one will be over here. So that's the first part of the exercise to identify where the change will happen. Now I can do part two to listen to the dissertation of the above verses. So I'm now I'm going to recite the verses. You must listen to how it is applied differently to the normal recitation of hafs. Instead of ghunna being applied, it will be done without ghunna. So the visual aid is there so you can know exactly where to listen and focus on or where the change is going to happen. <laughs> رشا وتوانهم من يقول بلجوا في عتو ونفور أي يضرب مثلا أتجعل فيها من يفسد فيها يقول إنها بقرة لا فارض ولا بكر فلن يخلف الله عهده من كسب سيئة وأحاطت به so hopefully you're able to take note of where the change was and hear how the change was applied. So for further practice, you can use the website below by either scanning the QR code or clicking on the link. It will take you to a particular website. What this website allows you to do is choose any particular riwayah. You can listen to the Quran being recited in any particular riwayah. And I've indicated to you which suar you can choose where you will hear these applications. Application we've done in this lesson, we'll find it in Surah Al-Lahab, Umasad, Surah Zilzal, Surah Al-A'la. So that's the minimum to listen to those three. Obviously, the more you listen, the easier it will become for you to identify this so you can listen to as many as you can. Um, because the first time we're doing this, I'm going to show you how the website works. So if you click on the link to open the website, and by default, it is set to Hafs and Hasim, which is the normal recitation. So today's lesson, we did Khalaf. So you scroll down until you find Khalaf and Hamza. You can choose the surah and the verse starting and the verse ending. Some of the riwayat will have more than one reciter. So you can choose which reciter to listen to. In this case, there's only one that is available. You can choose how many times the verse will be repeated or how many times the entire section that you've chosen will be repeated. Nice feature over here is that it actually shows you the visual mushaf and you can see where the changes are and it's been highlighted according to the color code given over here. But the purpose of this exercise is actually to do it audibly. We did it now before with a visual aid. We highlighted it and you could see the change. What you should now do is actually don't look at the mushaf, right? Set what you want to listen to and then close or minimize the browser so you don't see anything and then try and listen only by hearing the audio and trying to pick up the change. Right? The change we did today was Khalaf and Hamza, where he applies Hunna in the Wa and the Ya, with, um, applies it Ham in the Ya and the Wa without Hunna. When you hear that application, then you know that the recitation you're listening to is a recitation for Khalaf and Hamza.